Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to do a what's in my sewing box. This is going to be part of my new playlist which is sewing for noobs and that's just going to be a beginner series on to the world of sewing. If you're hearing uh, this lovely techno music like we are in a rave, it's my neighbor sharing his taste in music with us so uh, let's appreciate for a second when it comes to know what kind of equipment you need apart from a sewing machine when you're starting sewing it can be a bit confusing because craft stores and sewing stores are a minefield I mean it's like you, you want to buy everything but you don't necessarily need everything especially at the beginning we are going to start with measuring tools the most important piece of equipment when it comes to measuring tools is a measuring tape. Make sure it's the flexible ones that you get and not the stuff that you get to do uh, regular DIYs. These could be good if you do stuff like curtains or stuff like that, but they're not really great when it comes to dressmaking, simply because going over, ah, not the most practical thing to have. So get the, one of these. These are very cheap to get and it's going to be your one of your best friends. Also, you can get a ruler, so something that you have like in school would be just fine. It's always handy to have one. I'm using different types of grading triangles and French curves. These are fancy rulers that you can use, but you don't really need it at the beginning. I'm using them simply because I'm doing some pattern making. Also, you can use a metal stick. So these um, can be very handy for bigger projects like Curtain making, quilting, these are going to be just fine, but you won't need it straight away. So this is not the type of stuff that I would invest my money in straight away. So when it comes to measuring tools, the most important one is going to be your measuring tape and maybe a clear ruler. All right, so now we are going to move on with fitting tools. No, I don't have a problem with collecting. I just keep on buying cutting tools. One of the most important piece of equipment that you will ever need when sewing is a good pair of fabric scissors or fabric shears. If you didn't have much money to invest in equipment, I would tell you to invest money on one item, it would be this one. Because there is nothing worse than cutting your fabric with a dull blade. It's very frustrating and before you even start sewing, you're already frustrated with your project and that's not a way you want to start. So fabric shears are a bit different from regular scissors in a few things. So they will have a raised handle and that's because when you're cutting your fabric, you're keeping it on your worktop. So never away from your table. So that way it's a lot easier to have it raised. So you don't just have some problems with your hand getting in the way of the table. Also, they will have a raised tip. And as you can see, the tip on the top doesn't go all the way. And that's because that way your scissors or your shears won't get caught into your fabric. Also, it will cut all the way to the very tip, so it will be sharp all the way. So if you have some detailed work of, you know, a lot of little things that you have to cut, it will be very easy with this. When it comes to your fabric scissors or fabric shears, they are only for fabric. Do not use them for paper. Don't. And do not let anybody steal your pair of shears to use on paper, simply because paper will dull your blade and it will make it a lot more difficult for you in the future. So these, always for fabric. Little tip if you have a family that doesn't listen, a boyfriend or girlfriend who doesn't listen, or kids, this. So another good thing to have is a good pair of paper scissors and simply because you will deal with a bit of paper in your sewing career and it can be some uh, notes, some handmade patterns or commercial patterns that you need to cut. So it's always very handy to have them. I do prefer to cut interfacing with paper scissors as well simply because of the glue. Also when it comes to scissors you can have pinking shears so I don't have any. So that's the pair of scissors that have the crunted blades and these will serve a few purposes. First one cosmetically it's just because it can add a bit of embellishment to whatever you're cutting. 
And the second reason is because when cutting your fabric with pinking shears, you can uh, stop your fabric from fraying up to a certain extent because obviously your, your fabric will keep on fraying at some stage, but it can be something to prevent fraying. You can also use some embroidery scissors or snips and that will be really good for more detailed work or if you have to cut off little threads here and there. These are called snips simply for the noise that they are making. Another handy thing to have are little seam reapers or unpick, depending on which country you are, they will call it different names. And these are going to be an essential piece of equipment for you because you're going to have to unpick a lot of your seams if you start sewing. Even me now, I still have to do that a lot and these are a handy little tool to have. They have quite a sharp tip and the blade is in the middle and that is perfect to just rip apart your seams. Another thing that you can have is also a rotary cutter. So I am not a big fan of them, but a lot of people would swear by them. Uh, these are a bit of an investment simply because you have to get a lot of replacement blades and also because you need a cutting mat or a self-healing mat and you can't really use one without the other because otherwise you're going to destroy your blades very easily or your work table. So it's always good to have one, but they can be a bit of an investment. Personally, I don't think you need that uh, to start off with, but um, that will depend on your preference and how you, how you evolve as a crafter. Now for marking tools. One of the most important marking tools that you will need is some chalk. So this one is on a um, dispensable pen type thing and you will need different colors of chalk simply because um, different color fabric and a white won't show up on everything and blue chalk won't show up on all fabric either. So having a few colors would be handy. You can also have fabric pens and you have different ones in the market. Some are you can erase with some water and some with it's time and air that gets it off. I am not a big fan of this simply because they are expensive for what it is. It doesn't really give you much value for money in my opinion, but they are really good for making little markings on your fabric like dot marks and stuff like that. If you do prefer using only this for marking your fabric, be my guest. That's you cutting your fabric, that's you dealing with your fabric, so whatever is easiest for you and whatever works for you is the best thing. Also in your kit, don't forget to have a few markers, pens and pencils. These kind of things will always come in handy. If you're the type of crafter who likes to keep notes in a notepad, obviously these kind of things would be very handy. The bottom line when it comes to marking tools, having some kind of chalk of some sort would be handy or maybe some uh, fabric markers, something to mark up on your fabric that will not be permanent is the thing to do. Now for pins and needles. So for pins and needles, obviously you will need some sewing pins. I do like the ones that you buy on the reels like that with the colored head. You have so many different type of sewing needles that it can be a bit overwhelming. So when I buy them, I always double check that they are sharp because it's not always the case. So I always take them, pop myself a few times just to see if they are sharp. Obviously they are sold on a reel, but I would not keep them on the reel because it is not practical at all. So also you should have a pin cushion of some sort. You can either make it yourself or buy it. These are essential just to keep everything tidy. You can also have a little magnetic board. Um, I've seen it in, it's like a little soap dish where you can put your pins and it's magnetic. I don't have one because I have pin cushions and very often you will see pin cushions with a little dandly oops, focus little dandly thing there and that is usually filled up with sand so it can keep your pins sharp also you should always have a selection of hand sewing needles and of course a thimble <laughs> to uh, stop your um, fingers getting hurt so even if you're going to do a lot of sewing with your sewing machine, it doesn't mean that you're going to be free for hand sewing. I would love that, but 
you will need to sew certain things by hand so having a little selection of hand sewing needles they're not very pricey to get so always make sure you have some also make sure that you have a selection of hand sewing needles so standards maybe some for uh, stretchy materials or leather it's always nice to have a few in stock because it's easier than you might think to break your needles and it might stop you in your track if you don't have any so usually when you're buying a new sewing machine you should have in your accessory compartment a few sewing machine needles um, so they can you can get going and um, you don't have to buy a lot of stuff to start off with also you should have a selection of a little uh, bobbins for your machine your when you're buying your new sewing machine you should have maybe two usually that's what you have but it's not necessarily enough so they come in plastic or in metal i am personally preferring the metal ones it's just a preference there's no reason for it but the plastic ones usually comes in two different sizes so a little tip when you're going and buy new bobbins just take one with you so you can match the size in the shop instead of just buying a buttload that don't fit in your machine I don't know. Also, you should keep some safety pins handy. So, the big ones are really good for when you have to thread elastic or ribbon through a channel, and small ones as well if you have a very small project where you have to feed ribbons into channels and stuff like that. These are always very handy. So, these are nappy pins I think. Another thing that you can get which in my opinion is not extremely necessary but is some sewing gauges like these ones so they come in inches or in centimeter or in a mix of the two and these are great to double check hemlines or seam allowance and things like that or even these ones are great for buttons so you might have an use for them at the beginning but I don't think it's something that is very needed at first thankfully these kind of things is not really it's very gadgety but it's not too expensive so if you splurge on this kind of things I don't think it's going to break the bank all right guys so I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it helpful if you did why not leaving this video a thumbs up you can also subscribe so you will know the next time that I do a sewing for noobs video and if you have any request on stuff that you want to learn leave them down below because I you want this series to keep on going. Uh, next time we will be learning how to thread a machine and a few exercises to get you going with a bit of sewing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.